Okay, now we're going to repeat the same set of over the ground plane measurements, over the floor frequency response measurements that we did on the, the reference three-way system, particularly comparing the response with the real-time analyzer mic at different heights in front of the speaker and different distances and drawing the microphone from close out to far. Now, as you recall, on the three-way system, it didn't look all that good, particularly because there is a acoustic energy is reflected off of the floor, and that combines with the sound, the direct sound of the speaker, and combines with the direct sound destructively, so you get aberrations in the frequency responses. You get comb filtering and dips and everything. Now this, the CBT ground plane speaker is specifically designed to operate over the ground plane. And as you recall from my introduction, this is based on uh, U.S. Navy military underwater sound research. And uh, I adopted it to a line array. And what you're looking at here is a CBT prototype. It's, again, CBT stands for Constant Beam with Transducer. And we've dubbed this prototype. It's a first prototype called the CBT-36. In this case, the 36 stands for the circular arc angle. If you calculate the angle of this circular arc, it starts out at essentially zero degrees and it's folded back <coughs> and forms an angle of about 36 degrees. And this is uh, approximately five feet high. And it's composed of 72 tweeters, if you want to call them tweeters, and 18 mid-range, actually mid-base units, the, each of these individual, which looks like little silver dots, is a, <coughs> a one-half inch inverted dome wide-range tweeter. But in this case, it's more than a tweeter because uh, this is a tweeter that has, to, has a resonance of about 400 hertz, which is extremely low for a tweeter. It's actually a wide-band miniature speaker. And it's uh, actually used in some applications of roughly 500 hertz on up. Now, in this particular instance, for this speaker, we have it crossed over at 1 kilohertz to the 18 mid-range, mid-low frequency drivers uh, at 1 kilohertz, which is also quite low for a system of this type. And, of course, you see the, the, it's rather narrow, which makes the horizontal dispersion quite broad. <coughs> But this is specifically intended to operate over reflective floor or ground plane. And I mean, you can often say that it eliminates ground bounces, but it actually integrates the ground bounces into the total system and in effect doubles the size of the array. I have a little balsa wood model here that I used previously when I was demonstrating these, but this, there are two types of ground plane, I'm sorry, two types of CBT speakers a freestanding CBT, which is what this depicts. You can see the little drivers on the front of it. This is an eighth, eighth inch scale model. And the CBT theory with its shading dictates that, that all the drivers essentially in the center of the array are turned up to maximum. And then as you proceed toward the outside edges, the drivers are turned down. And the end result of this so-called shading is that it ends up with an extremely uniform polar response, which is essentially completely independent of frequency. I mean, in fact, if you take a, the pro sound guys like to measure polars. They will rotate this and then rotate, either rotate the speaker or rotate the mic around it. And if this circular arc speaker is actually rotated around its center of curvature like this with a microphone out here, you get essentially the same polar curve up close, very extremely close to the array that you get very far back, which is not the case with a typical line array speaker. And this is, this is a system specifically designed to operate over a reflective floor. You could have carpet over it that has some effect on the high frequency responses, particularly if you listen near the floor. You can, you can see the reflected, in other words, the ground plane ref reflection a visual reflection, which of course is also an acoustical reflection in this case. 
And I, the first test which I'm going to do is I'm going to try to hold the microphone at the same height as I did for the three-way system. Now remember, on the three-way system, it has a, mi a mid-range and a tweeter, and so I held to get a good curve on this with its, uh, you know, its so-called 24 dB per octave link with Riley crossover. You have to hold the mic essentially in the center, and if you were at an anechoic chamber with the microphone, you would measure this along its axis, and it would be very flat. But it isn't necessarily flat at other angles, and definitely not. Doesn't look all that good when you measure it over a reflective ground plane. So what I'm going to do first is I'll raise the microphone up to the, roughly this level, which I think was about 30, uh, 37, a little bit less than a meter. And I'm going to just slowly walk back with the microphone. And I'm also going to, on this system, I'm going to also do one up at standing height and see what it looks like. So first I'm going to turn... Now, I may, might make a comment. When you're implementing the any speaker, I mean, you have to separate the theory from the implementation. Now, this represents a specific implementation of the CBT array. And, you know, this is a first, this is a first prototype, and it does have some warts, and you're going to see them here. Uh, now, well, now, one thing to note, that when I was drawing it away, the curve essentially stayed the same. It was flat. It didn't exhibit any ground plane or floor bounces like the, the three-way system did. And also the other thing to notice is the, the sound pressure level didn't drop off very dramatically. Now I'll, I'll turn it up again. Now I'm, a, now I'm approximately five meters away. Now we're going to do it at standing height. <clears throat> and I'm going to hold the microphone up at this height and go from near the system. I'm out about, oh, between three to five meters away. Now, one thing you'll note, that, that the level hardly changed at all. By that, I mean it wasn't any louder right in front of it than it was in the back. And that's a, a byproduct of when you actually measure off axis of a CBT speaker. <coughs> By that, I mean on axis of a freestanding CBT speaker is right on a line perpendicular to the center of the array. Now, because this is a ground plane, you chop it off and you lower the array down to the ground. Now, where is the on-axis curve? It's actually grazing the floor. The on-axis is actually on the floor. But <clears throat> So, in effect, a ground plane CBT that you're listening to in a room, you're, you're listening at off-axis angles all the time. 
But because the polar pattern of these CBT arrays is so extremely uniform with frequency, it doesn't change. You can listen at those angles. And in fact, <clears throat> as you imagine, I'm getting rid of the bottom half, and this is a ground plane. So you're when you're close to the system, you're in effect way off axis. As you proceed farther away from the top of it, you become more and more on axis. So if you plot the sound pressure over that line, it actually essentially stays the same. So what that means is, is you can you can actually come up to the array here and listen to it, you know, and then just walk back, and the level doesn't change at all. So conversely, it, if you if you start from back here, it's not loud. It, loudness doesn't increase when you walk up to it, which is completely opposite to typical speakers. Now when we were doing the same test. With the three-way system, uh, it was very loud when you walked up to it this way and dropped off quite dramatically by the time you got out here. And the engineers say that the, a, a point source speaker drops off at 6 dB per doubling of distance. That means that the level, as an example, if it's a certain sound pressure at 3 feet, and you go to 6 feet, it drops 6 dB, or to 12 feet, it drops another 6 dB. Or whether, you know, whether it's 3, three 6, or 12 meters, it doesn't make any difference. Each time you double the distance. Now, on a well-behaved line array, it's supposed to drop 3 dB per doubling of distance, which is in fact what it does on this, particularly at points near the ground. Or, when you're operating off axis at, at the height of the array, which is near the end of the array, the CBT arrays, when you go on a, a, a line that goes from near to far, the sound pressure level stays essentially the same. So, I mean, it really does. It sounds just as loud here as it does up front. Or, you know, or conversely, for a certain loudness near it, it doesn't drop off in the back. So that's, a, that's an extremely neat uh, advantage of these arrays.